Good evening, Redemption Point Church. We're coming to you uh, on this Wednesday night. So thankful to have you. Uh, obviously, instead of me singing to you guys tonight, I'm going to go ahead and give a quick word on how to be an effectful evangelist. I hope you guys like it. So this message came to me a couple weeks ago. My wife and I were out at Cody's Roadhouse uh, with our sons. And when the food came, my son wanted to go ahead and pray for this uh, for the food. So he jumps in and says, thank you, Jesus, for mommy. Thank you for daddy. Thank you for the French fries and for the chicken nuggets and for the corn, and for the French fries and for the French fries and for the French fries again. He was really happy that we had French fries that night. Uh, and as he, as he said in Jesus' name, amen, a, a guy over to the right of us with a couple of his buddies looks over and he says, man, that is absolutely incredible. I think that's really cool that you guys are teaching your kids how to pray. And it was one of those moments that really touched my wife and I and honestly kind of was like an attaboy for us. <laughs> um, so anyways, but it was one of those moments where I looked and I said, you know, that's a, that's a great way to just be, be evangelical in your, in your walk with God is just being able to sit down and just pray and just give a little bit of light to the people around you. So the best way I can explain evangelism is it's passing your flame to another. We're called to bring the light to the darkness around us. So in Romans 12, 1, it says this, it says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. As Christians, we need to live a life that's pleasing to God. Every single part of our being should bleed the love of Christ to the people that surround us. So what exactly is Paul saying in Romans 12.1? He's saying in the beginning of verse 1, he urges us to reflect back on the enormous mercy of God. And in the, re in the verses previous, <clears throat> he elaborates on the fact that God doesn't owe us anything. In Romans 6.23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ. We have all, whether you're saved or unsaved, fallen short of God's mercy, but he chose to give us life and purpose. So what should a Christian's response be? It should be sold out to him. Chris McClarney wrote it best. We give everything and nothing less to him. So what is evangelism and what does it take to evangelize? Webster's actual definition is the spreading of Christian gospel by public preaching or personal witness. Examples of this is teaching of God's word, our testimony, Christian godly living, and building up the body of Christ. So how can we be successful in evangelism as Christians? The greatest defense of our faith as Christians is going to be our lifestyle. We can't just throw out scripture at people and hope it sticks. There has to be an authenticity and a relationship that is externally visible to make a difference in people's lives. Basically, what I'm saying is we can't live double lives. We can't be doing all of these things and being happy and quoting scripture and then the next sentence cussing people out. It just doesn't work. So... So the best way we can achieve this, again, is by building relationships before we do so, building up a trust. So again, the greatest example of your faith is going to be your lifestyle. So how do we influence? Well, leadership equals influence. So we need to be a people that, that can be looked up to. We need to do everything with excellence. We don't want to be lazy or lackluster in anything that we do, no matter what it is. If you're an employee, you need to be the best employee you can be. If, if, we're, if we're business owners like I am, you know, we need to be the best example of Christ to whoever we're encountering. So we, we also need to be people that build up and not tear down. We often think that it should be a microwave-style salvation, but if at all possible, the best way that you can, can, uh, can reach people is actually more of a crockpot approach. It might take sacrifice. It might take people calling you at 3 o'clock in the morning with questions and, and with, with you know, needing answers and stuff. So it's, it's, it might take weeks. It might take months and maybe even years of pouring into people. You have to be available to people and ask God to give them opportunities to speak in your life um, situations organically. We don't need to be weird. We need to stay relevant in our approach. We need to realize that God is doing a new thing. You know, sometimes door-to-door -door ministry, you know, it might have worked 10, 15 years ago, but, you know, in this day and age, it's not working as effectively as it used to. My, my best example of this would be Kirby Vacuums. 
my wife and I, we used to live in Beverly Hills and there was a door to door Kirby vacuum salesman that came to our house. I pulled in and it was just one of those weird situations where there was just this random van outside my house and this guy sitting inside my house showing us how to work a vacuum. And I was like, this is not working. I'm not buying your vacuum. You know, it might've worked back, you know, 10, 15 years ago, but now all of us have computers. It's like, if I want to buy a vacuum, I'm going to go online and buy a vacuum. So again, you need, we need to stay relevant as Christians and what we're doing. So find out what works and where the people are going. So as church bodies as a whole, an effective way to grow the body numerically and spiritually is through the gift of evangelism. Christ equips us in Ephesians 4.11, as well as other gifts, to build up the church just like the others. So in verse 11 it says, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers to equip his people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up. It is truly an incredible tool that is used to reach the lost people outside of the church. So how can we effectively use this tool that God gave us? Remember, our context is always going to determine the method of outreach. So we need to love what they love. As a young family, my wife and I, we absolutely adore our children. So a perfect example of this is if you're trying to reach young people that are our age, reach out to their kids, be, be loving to their kids, because that's what's going to speak to us. And it works for every generation, every culture. It doesn't matter. So we need to love what they love. Um, and, and honestly, to summarize all of this, there is not much greater... Um, than having the opportunity to reach the lost and bring souls into the kingdom. Whether on a corporate level or a personal level, God is calling us to live out our lives as living examples of who He is. In this season we are in, make a decision tonight to intentionally be the light and reach the lost. Thank you so much for your time. We're going to go ahead and close with a word of prayer tonight. God, I just pray right now for anyone listening under my voice, God, tonight. I pray that you will just touch them, God. I pray that you will touch me personally, God. That you will let me be equipped better as an evangelist, God, to reach the lost, God, for you, Lord. We know that it's not about numbers, God. We know that it's not about um, it's not about money, God. I just pray that, that uh, you will just give us the opportunity, God, to reach people, God, because we want to win souls for your kingdom, God. God, and share the same love and faith that you've shown us, God. In your name we pray. Amen. Guys, have a great night. Thank you so much.